Yeah, well, come on, raise your hand. Anybody? Nobody? Am I the first one? Am I the first one for anybody? Yeah. Uh-oh. Wow, that means the task is, the task is better. All right, now I just found out that we're going old school. I'm already old school when I was your age. Whenever I was in a classroom, we took notes and the professor lectured and we liked it. No PowerPoints, nothing. So my feeble attempt at a PowerPoint didn't even work today, so you're gonna have to put up with lecturing, unfortunately. We'll try to be uh, old school and like the old Blackboard for a little bit. But for the most part, my name is Rod Blackstone. Um, let's see, how many of you, do I know any of you? Have you ever seen me on campus ever before? Yeah, okay. All right, some people are hesitant to put up their hands. All right, you probably know me better at this place as um, the guy who leads the cheer. Oh, say can. Eugene. All right, uh, my, my claim to fame at the University of Charleston is that I actually introduced that several years ago. I have no idea why or how, but I did. Um, during the spring and summer months, you'll find out that I'm better known as Toastman because if you go to a baseball game here in Charleston, especially not necessarily a UC baseball game, although we can do it there, but the, the West Virginia Power baseball games, I'm known for leading cheers and having fun. But I guess the reason I'm really here today is because I'm also the uh, senior assistant to the mayor of Charleston. And so I am here to talk about networking. And um, I understand that you had some really good presenters this week. How many of you heard Archie Talley yesterday? Just a few. Archie Talley is an old friend. He is a motivational speaker. And for those of you who ever have to do public speaking, I want you to re remember this from the difference between his presentation, which was powerful and invigorating and mine today, that you never want to go after the best speaker. It's like in baseball. You don't want to go be the one up right after the guy hits the grand slam in the top of the ninth because then it's so, such a letdown. Okay, it's like whoever performed after Kendrick Lamar. Anybody remember who performed after Kendrick Lamar the other night? No, because he made the powerful impression. But Archie Talley got you all fired up yesterday about some of the life lessons you need to learn and just fired you up and ready to go out there and do career development, right? I feel the enthusiasm. I can just feel it coming from the crowd today. My job is a little different. We're going to talk about networking. Networking and what it means for career development. How many of you are seniors? Okay, just three. How many juniors? Just two. Sophomores? The rest of you are freshmen? Really? A lot of freshmen in here. Okay, well, that's good to know because one of the things that, that happens is that as you think about this, especially the freshmen who are here, you have four years to develop some of the things we'll be talking about. For the seniors, it's a little bit more of a a challenge because that networking that you've already accomplished in many ways can help you as you launch into career development. So I probably can't measure up to the great talk that Archie provided, but I want to leave you with a lasting impression, a final sort of thought from Career Development Week. Professional relationships matter. They make all the difference in the world. The better you lay a foundation, for those relationships, the better off you'll be. And remember, the key thing here is first impressions and lasting impressions. And we'll talk today, during the course of this, um, we'll be talking about goals, about visioning how you get to certain goals and your career goals, and networking in career goals, and some ideas about how to leave positive impressions, some ideas about some things to avoid, all aimed at the getting you to uh, Think about what jumps off the page about you. What do people say about you? And how will that have a positive impact on your career development, on, your, on the pursuing the career that you want to pursue and being able to find the fun professional fulfillment that you uh, want to find? I have a theory. I've been working on this with, um, in some of the lectures I've done with Jay Wilt's class when he's talked to uh, some freshman scholars. I might try this a different way. All right, a lot of the life decisions that we have, I believe, come down to this. All right, A, current condition, where you are right now. What, and that's a different condition depending on the circumstance and the, um, and the context. B is a place you want to be, a job you want to have, a person you want to be with, a desired goal, a desired outcome. And the big challenge in life, and there's so many of these that are out there, 
is how you get to goal B from current condition A. Where you go, what you have to do, how do you get there from here? And so we'll talk a lot about that today. It's a lo lot of practical applications. Now, I've used this in a, in a lecture about leadership because here's my theory, that if you want to be a leader, you want to get a whole bunch of people to go from A to B. You want to be able to lead people and influence them so that they'll want to do B and join you in desired condition B. Does that make sense? All right, let's think about some of the practical applications of it. What are some of the um, desired conditions, outcome, and positions? What are some of the places and conditions that you find yourself in right now? And how do you get to B? All right, let's take a big one. Anybody following the presidential race right now? Wow, you guys are so enthusiastic, I just feel it. Okay, anybody? All right, name a candidate who's running for president. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. His current condition is um, millionaire businessman, television celebrity, and his desired position is to become president of the United States. So he's going to try to do all kinds of things he can to achieve that goal. Hillary Clinton, same way, and a bunch of others. I think there are about 10 of them that are still in the race right now. So it's getting people to support your favorite candidate. If you were impassioned about one of your candidates right now, one of the things that you'd be doing is you'd be wanting to try to convince people to vote for your candidate. If you're a supporter of Donald Trump, you want to convince your friends, hey, I want you to join me in support of Donald Trump. So you are trying to influence and lead people from A to B. Your desired position A, or your con current condition A, which is, okay, you don't know if your friends want to do that or, and to get them to go to B. All right, let's think about another A to B that's uh, closer to campus. How about the, uh, the new arena, the gym, the innovation center? All right, current condition is? Actually, let me take you back for a few years before the current condition. What was the current condition two years ago at the University of Charleston? For those of you who are on the basketball team and were told, hey, you're going to play in the new gym, right? All right, it was, a, it was an old gym. It was an old aging gym, which wasn't a great facility. And for now, I think it's going on 12 years, the university's been trying to build what's going up next door and the new the Innovation Center, the Worley Innovation Center. So, so the desired position, the desired outcome, the goal is getting that created so that next year, volleyball, we hope, and basketball will be there and we'll be able to create an Innovation Center. Okay, another example of A to B. Uh, let's go out to Vino's on Saturday night. Is that, a, is that a desired goal? Is that a desired state? Is that another way that you, inf that you can seek to influence an outcome? All right, so current condition, all right, we're here on Saturday night. Not sure if we're having a lot of fun. Desired condition, let's go out, everybody go out to Vino's and dance the night away and drink legal beverages if you're allowed to do that. All right, an effective goal setting is envisioning the condition B and figuring out how you get there from here, wherever here is. My theory about uh, the applications to leadership, big and small, is about the effective use of influence where you have influence to be able to influence an outcome, to be able to take where you are now and, how, and get to B however you can get there. Life is full of A to B goal setting. Now it also has career development implications, right? All right, when I was your age, my B goal was to become the White House correspondent for a national network news program. I was convinced that that was gonna be my life's work and that I was going to enjoy it. Now, that ended up being more than just an A to a B. That ended up having, to, that's the ultimate goal was there. But to get there from whenever I was in college, I had to start getting experience getting um, people, in, getting to know people, getting a body of work that could demonstrate that I knew what I was doing and that I was capable of it. And then ultimately, I thought, was to become a White House correspondent so I could be reporting on those political developments. All right, now, A to B is also good in interpersonal relationships. Is that true? All right, think about wanting to impress somebody. Thinking about, uh, let's say, have that someone, that special someone who you see is attractive on campus and you start plotting ways to achieve the desired goal with that person. All right, does that apply? 
you see somebody, hey, I want to date this person. So the current condition is, all right, single. Desired position is, okay, I want to be connected with that person in an interpersonal relationship. So we do that. We do that all the time. Now, what's missing? What's missing from that? Simple formula, right? Any thoughts? Um, so it's, life is just that easy. I just identify my goal and there's a path to it and boom, I'm there. What's missing? Anybody? Hmm? Well, you can use this as a process. What gets in the way? Obstacles. There can be a whole bunch of obstacles that you don't even know about. What are the, the obstacles that get in the way? All right, for instance, let's talk about that. Let's apply that. All right, presidential election, what's the obstacle to Donald Trump? Hmm? Uh, six other Republican presidential candidates. Seven? Okay. Um, and Hillary Clinton and or Bernie Sanders, people who also want that desired goal, who also think that they deserve to be over at B. He, they're in the way of him. And sometimes he creates some obstacles himself in, in trying to <coughs> say things that might uh, get people to not like him as much anymore. But, so there are obstacles in the way. And he has to, if he's going to be effective at doing this, is if he's going to be effective at achieving his desired goal, he's got to figure out a way around the obstacles. He's got to figure out, he's got to identify a path to get there. The path is crucial. You've got to figure out your path. Yeah. Goal setting and achieving in goals is about figuring out where you want to be and figuring out how you get there from here. And a lot of that relates to the path that you choose, the strategies that you employ, and then also being able to identify the obstacles and being able to get around them or through them on that kind of a case. All right, the UC gym. What have been some of the obstacles in the way of the UC gym? Hmm? Sorry, say what? Snow. Snow. Well, yeah, the delays. Snow is so is great some delays in the construction of it. Money. Oh, for years. I remember this started, I think the discussion is about the new gymnasium started, I think, probably in about 2004. And then they, they were doing a lot of fundraising. In about 2008, the Great Recession hit, and so some of that fundraising dro dried up until we got out of the recession. And then you had some donors that stepped up and said, hey, yeah, I want to be part of that. So funding was a major obstacle. Uh, another obstacle is trying to keep the teams active, having a place for the volleyball teams to play and the basketball teams to play while the gym is uh, being redone, finding where, uh, where people are practicing. So you had a lot of obstacles that were in the way of this. You had a path through it, and what's going to happen is we went from the old Eddie King gym and a long time ago, and then got, we're getting through some of the obstacles right now. Another one of the obstacles happened, not just the weather, but also because there was some asbestos in the old building. It was so old that they had to be able to remove the asbestos in an, in an effective way. So there are obstacles in the way of the gym. All right. Um, let's see. Going to the club with people. What are the obstacles in the way of that goal? Okay. My, my desired goal is I want to go out and party on Saturday night and I want to go downtown to do it. What, what's the obstacle in the way of that goal? Uh, with all my good friends. Hmm? Not everyone's available. They might have different things that they want to do. So I've got to figure out if I can convince them to do what I want to do as well. Um, what else? Hmm? Getting there. Okay, transportation. That's a, that's, a great, that's a great idea. Okay, how do we get there from here? Quite literally. A lot of this, this can be geographic, not just condition to condition. This can be geographic, especially when it comes to leadership. I want you all to join me, and we're going to go do this right now. Who's with me? Let's go. All right, and if I look behind, nobody's behind me, then I just, a little obstacle in the way. Uh, what else is an obstacle? How about money? Yeah, you decided that you were going to do the GoFundMe fund for Kanye West, and there goes all your money for spending this weekend. Darn, I hate when that happens. All right, so what you have to do is you have to be able to say, okay, how do I get around those obstacles? Uh, transportation, what am I going to do? Um, let's see, can, can you drive? Can you drive? And we can all go down together. Uh, money? Um, well, let's see. We'll figure out how we're going to get around money. Maybe I can borrow some money from somebody to be able to do it. Okay, what about that relationship? 
What's the obstacles to the relationship? I want to have a relationship with somebody. You want to have a relationship with that special person that uh, you think is, um, is really attractive and I think is really attractive. And like, wow, I just, I just need to be hanging with that person. What's the obstacle in that? What's the obstacle from getting me to point A to point B or you to getting point A to point B? Hmm? Yeah, I mean, doesn't think, you know, I've been there, you know, thinking somebody's much more attractive than they think I am. Does that happen to anybody else? All the time. Really? Yeah. I thought it just happened to me. Wow. Well, you're a good looking lad, I'll tell you. It's no problem. Happy to help. Okay. Ha yeah, it happens to me all the time. All right. Uh, not as interested. Okay. What else? Ooh, might have heard something about me. Hmm. That's, that, might be an over, that might be an obstacle I can't overcome. Uh, what else? They might be already taken. They might have different priorities, right? They have a different priority in a relationship than, than I do. Huh. Well, that's too bad. So, okay, can I still get there from here? That's amazing. Okay, what's it, what's it take? Take out their boyfriend. Um, how about maybe trying to do better than him? Okay, that, that could work. To, to be more impressive than he is. All right, uh, what are some strategies I might employ in that case? I might find somebody who likes me and respects me and appreciates me to go talk, have a conversation. You know, can you go put in a good word for me, right? Get an advocate, get a champion. Some of you guys who were uh, in athletic teams have heard me talk about this before. I'll say, who's your champion? Who's that advocate? Who's that person that believes so much in you that they'll be willing to go to bat for you, so to speak, whenever, there's, whenever the chips are down on something? All right, so let's see. Um, getting to be with him or her I have to look for ways to make a connection, too. I have to be able to make sure that person knows that I'm interested. Um, might be trying to look for an opportunity to just get a one-on-one -on -one little conversation so I can make a really positive first impression and say, hey, check this out. You and I, um, we, we need to develop something here. We could develop something here. Perhaps go through the mutual friend. Um, looking for ways to go around the obstacle. You want to use every available resource that you have. And that is additional friends. That might be learning something about that person, researching, finding out what you can know about that person so that you might be able to figure out, okay, I can appeal to him or her by talking about this. I, can, I know that, there's, that this person has an interest in football. He's an Arizona Cardinals fan, so I'm going to learn everything I can about Larry Fitzgerald and Carson Palmer so I can have that conversation and, and find that mutual ground where we can start a conversation, so we can start a connection and then be able to build on that connection into a relationship. Because relationships, I'll tell you what, make all the difference, not only in life, but also in your career development. So once you get a chance to make that connection, then what's the next step? All right, we finally got a chance to be able to talk to the woman of your dreams, and now what do you want to do? You want to make a positive first impression, right? You want to be on time. You want to, you're going to care about your appearance. You're going to care about what that person's interested in. You're going to try to talk to them about what they're interested in. You're going to talk or listen more? Listen more. Absolutely. You make it about them, right? You want them to be interested in you, and as a result of that, you want to show your interest in them so that they might be more inclined to be interested in you. Now, what's this have to do with career development? Isn't it the same, relation, same thing in relationships that you build, not only in personal relationships, but also in professional relationships that make all the difference in the world? So, getting from A to B in a professional relationship is very similar to trying to impress your favorite girl or guy that you're trying to, uh, to get with, who you want to be with, as it were. Because once you make that connection in the interpersonal relationship, once you make that connection, you finally convince him or her that, that yeah, it's worth giving me a chance, then guess what? You've got to keep earning it, right? 
How many of you have been in, in a long-standing relationship with somebody? You got to keep earning it. You, you get in the door, and that's an achievement in and of itself. Hey, I got, this, I got a chance to talk with this person. And yeah, I mean talk with this person as in converse with this person. That's how we said it whenever I was your age. But you get in the door to be able to talk with somebody, and then you make your first impression, and you want to leave a lasting impression so that they'll want more. They'll want to learn more. They'll want to spend more time with you. They'll want to learn more about you. And so once that happens, the door is open, you walk through, all right, we're golden. I got, I got to my initial goal of B. And I'll s tell you this, in, in the case of getting the desired J-O-B, it's very, very similar. The object of your attention would be the person making the decision about who they're going to hire. Are you with me? And you look for opportunities to meet that person. You look for opportunities to be able to co converse with that person, to connect with that person. Now, what are the obstacles? All right, my, my, um, my desire is to have job B. What are the obstacles getting in the way? I'm sorry, speak up. A whole bunch of other people are going to be competing with me for that job, right? Presumably. I can't say, okay, well, you're going to, hey, I'm, I'm here and you're going to hire me, right? Just because I'm who I am. No, it doesn't quite work that way. What else? Hmm? Prerequisites, making sure I'm qualified and being able to be sure, because I tell you what, if I'm not qualified, then this becomes an unrealistic goal. Probably. Not always, definitely, not always definitely, but probably that's an unrealistic goal. So I need to be qualified. You need to be know, know what the prerequisites are. You may better get there from here. All right, what else might be? That person has no idea who I am. I am just a complete and total question mark to that person. Or, worse, they've heard something about me that is negative. Those are all obstacles of getting in the way of getting to that J-O-B goal. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it precludes you from being able to get there from here. What you have to do is you have to plot that strategy. Figure out whether it's worth going through the obstacles or around the obstacles and, co and combining as much as you can all your available resources, and that includes human resources as well. You might be employing a whole network of people to try to get the person to achieve that J-O-B. Thinking about what happened here at the university with the, um, with the gymnasium, that took a whole bunch of people to get to that goal. Not only, not only donors, but also people asking for money, and Brent Stevens, who has to go and figure out the alternative plans. All kinds of different people filled roles to get from A to B. And I'll tell you this, in your professional development, your career development, the wider that network of people that you have, the easier it is going to be for you to get to the J-O-B that you want. Because people make all the difference. And let's get back to that job performance, that, that job application. Once you get the chance to make the connection, then what? Next step, you want to make a positive first impression, just like you did with the boyfriend or girlfriend, potential boyfriend or girlfriend. Then you want to leave a powerful lasting impression that will leave your employer wanting to find out more about you, just like with that personal relationship. And here's another deja vu. You want to get those people who, who you know well and who know you well, and who still like you anyway, to be able to reiterate, to tell that person why they should hire you. That's part of the networking. That's part of being able to utilize a network of people that know you and like you to your advantage. And then you get to build on a new positive, rewarding relationship with an employer. And the foundation on the initial connection with a stronger and positive impression. And then, just like with a boyfriend or girlfriend, you still got to earn it. The door is open. You got to be able to walk through it and be prepared to put your best foot forward in walking through it. But then you still have to prove that you deserve to be there. Now, there'll be times when you don't achieve the desired outcome. And then what do you do? You have to regroup. You have to try to figure out, take another look at this. Okay, why couldn't I get there from here? Uh, is it possible for me to get there from here? Maybe it's not. Maybe you have to take a look at the goal again and say, you know, I don't have the prerequisites for that job. So maybe I need to redirect my goals. 
I'd encourage you to take a long and serious how look on why you didn't meet the goal. See if there could be a better strategy that you could use to get around, to learn for the next time. Maybe you reset the goal in a different direction. Or you look in the same direction of uh, figuring out better timing, because timing can be so much, so important. And it's important to, to figure out, is it an achievable goal? Is it realistic? Is it worth doing that, a realistic pursuit? Now, instead of doing that, too often people will say, oh, I didn't get the job, I didn't know enough people, it's all on who you know, life is not fair. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said that? Life isn't fair, it's all about who you know. It's all about who you know, that's just not fair. Well, let me tell you something. I'm here to tell you that that's part of life. And sometimes it actually is fair. Now, heck of a thing for somebody to talk to you about and the thing, well, life isn't fair. Well, no. Who you know, actually it should be whom you know, just so you know. Whom you know is a reflection about how you've made connections with people how you have left impressions with people, how you have created positive relationships with people. Who you know, it makes all the difference. Because whom you know is all about who knows you. And yeah, friends, that's what's going to open the doors. That's what, what's going to give you the opportunity to walk into somebody's office and say, hey, I am qualified for this job. You need to hire me at some point. You're more likely to be given a professional opportunity by somebody who has come to know the work that you can do, your work product, what you bring to the table, somebody who believes that you bring value to their organization, and somebody who can envision how you'll fit into their organization. That's what it means to be known by somebody. That's, that's why who you know is also important in professional and career development. The more people you have a chance to get to know before you go into the job market, the better off. Those people will be able to appreciate the attributes that you have, the personality that you have, how you get along with people. And they'll understand your value better than if you are completely unknown to them a blank slate, or if, you're, if the impression of you is negative. The better chance you'll have an opportunity to prove that you can add value is because somebody and a personal connection, a personal relationship will open that door because it'll give you a better opportunity than you would have otherwise. So whom you know makes a huge difference in the opportunities that you hope to achieve in developing your career makes all the difference. When everything else is equal or mostly equal, the employer is more likely to go with what is known, what is familiar, than it is to take a risk on the unknown or the uncertain. That's why so much promoting is done within an, within an organization. They've already been able to see how this person works with other people. The value that this person brings to the organization is apparent, is known to them. So. If you are already in an organization, if you're already working for somebody, you have a better chance of being hired within because they know who you are and what you can do. And that makes all the difference. So getting people to know what you have to offer, getting people to know what your work ethic is like, is crucial. And you can't start that soon enough. And I'm here to tell you that it makes a whole bunch of difference. The challenge for you right now is to look forward to starting your career development, the value of networking in trying to break down the obstacles, the uncertainty, the unknown conditions, and build a network to become better known among the people who either make employment decisions or who influence those employment decisions. Let me tell you something about my, per I was thinking about my personal job history. Um, I worked for the mayor of Charleston. I had for 13 years. Danny Jones was elected in 2003. He is now the longest serving mayor in the history of Charleston. I have no idea why he did this, but right around the time he was about to get elected in 2003, he came to a ball game, and he sat with me at the old ballpark where the hospital is now, and he said, I think I'm going to get elected on Tuesday, and I want you to come work for me. I'm like, well, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Why do I need to, why should I do that? Now, at that point, th there was still an open question about whether we'd have a new ballpark in Charleston. And he said, well, who else is going to get the ballpark built? So he appealed to that part of me to say, uh, okay, I'm c I'll come to work for you. 
best, best thing I've ever done. I love this job. It's really opened a lot of doors for me, and I've really enjoyed getting to know this community. For whatever reason, Danny said he wanted to hire me. I'm blessed because of it. But as I look back, and I've had eight jobs, eight full-time jobs in 30 years, and every single one of those started with a personal connection to somebody. Either somebody like Danny who had witnessed my work. He was at the, the Division of Highways working for a few years when I was the press secretary to the governor of West Virginia. So that's how he knew me. We weren't fast friends. I wasn't a big contributor to his campaign. I don't think I even contributed to his campaign. But, uh, but he, want, he knew me enough and knew the work product that I had and knew enough people who knew me to say, hey, what do you think if I were to hire Rod for this? And got the feedback that was positive. Even uh, in 19, uh, I told you about my, um, my dream to be a um, White House correspondent. Well, I was working for Channel 8 in 1989. And Bob Wise was a congressman representing this area. And Bob had a pr press secretary position open. And he came to me and he said, I think we should talk about this. I had covered him, so I had that personal connection. It opened a door. Now, it changed my vision that I was going to become a White House correspondent and end, end up being a government employee for all these years. But every single time I've had a job opportunity. And I'll tell you what, when I was your age, I was an, an a senior at Syracuse University. I was coming out of school expecting to be hired right away. And I spent 15 months working part-time jobs before I got a job in my field along that path of where I wanted to go, along my A to B. 15 months of part-time work, and I felt like a failure. At that time, I was sending out cold resumes, and I wasn't really doing networking very well. I'd send a resume to somebody, and a resume tape that they do in broadcast journalism, but not getting anywhere, because nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew me. Nobody knew the work I was doing. I was working part-time at a radio station in Pittsburgh, so that was limited. And if they had a full-time position, I probably would have gotten it because they knew my work. But I wasn't really doing it. And how many of you know who Tony Creedy is? Tony Creedy is the voice of the West Virginia Mountaineers. You can blame him for me being in West Virginia. He and I went to Syracuse University together. And 15 months later, as I'm mired in this despair of not having full-time work and not being able to get to where I want to go in life, I talked to Tony, and he said, we have a job here at West Virginia Radio in Morgantown, where he was working at the time. Why don't you uh, give a call, and I'll put in a good word for you. And that made all the difference. Finally, a door opened because of a personal connection. And, it, and I'll tell you what, it, I'm blessed because of that. Now, that doesn't mean that people without personal connections can't get those opportunities, but it means, by and large, in this professional world, the more you have going for you, the more people you have, the, more, the broader your network of personal connections, the more likely there's going to be a connection that reaches the person that you're trying to reach. And it's true about friendships. It's true about, uh, and it's certainly true about jobs. So Tony made the difference for me. He opened the door. Now, I still had to walk in, and I still had to earn it, and I still had to start developing a professional reputation that said, okay, I'm reliable, I do good work, and I can I work well with others. But that the challenge is to be able to get that experience now as much as you can and build those connections now so that when you're looking for that J-O-B that you really, really want, you'll be able to find, use your connections and your network to reach the people that might be able to help. A lot of it comes with time and experience. More, the more experience you gain, more people are going to come to know you and all the great things that you can bring to their organization. But also speaks to the need to seize every opportunity you can to make a positive impression on people so they'll open doors for you in the future. And the targets, of people that you want to target are the decision makers, people who can hire you, and those people who can influence you. Remember, you may not fully know who the people are that can influence your future. That's a good thing and a bad thing in some ways. Now, people who have employed you and can speak of your value in an organization, that will come in very handy. Places where you have part-time jobs now, where, where that supervisor that really thinks you're pretty special recognizes and can tell somebody else, hey, this person adds value to our organization. I've only got him working part-time, but you know, I know he's work, looking for a full-time job, and, and I think he can help you out. And remember this also, whenever you put that resume together, and you're looking for a new job, and you, and you have listed some place that you have worked, 
If that person who's looking at that resume knows that person that employed you, guess what's going to happen? Phone call or an email. Hey, do you know Steve? I see Steve worked for you and be able to hear what the feedback is. Now, there are certain things you can and cannot say whenever you're providing a job reference. And there are, there are certain things you're, you're not allowed to say because you're not allowed to get too negative. But I'll tell you the big difference, if somebody calls me and says, hey, Steve worked, uh, Steve worked for you, what do you think about him? Yes, yes he did. He worked for me from this date to that date. And this is the position he had. Anything else you want to add? No. Guess what? That means I really didn't care for Steve. Or I'm going to say, yes, yeah, Steve was a great guy. I would, I would recommend him for any job that you have. Let me tell you, he's a great guy. He worked so well with others. People love working for him. And he was creative. He respected other people. You have that opportunity now. Every job that you have, you have the opportunity to make that lasting impression on people that can have an impact on your future heading down the line, that can be related to somebody else who will be in a position to give you that J-O-B that you want so much. So remember that. Seize every opportunity that you can to be able to make a first and lasting impression on people. And recognize that you don't always know who's watching and who has an impact on your future. If the person, uh, if you can make those connections, the broader your connections, the better off you'll be. I was talking to um, Javante Hughes on the basketball team. I told him I was going to be giving a talk on professional development. And I said, okay, what's on, on, on networking? I said, okay, what's your impression of networking? And he said, well, when we're getting together in class projects and doing things, the more people that are around the table, the more creative ideas are going to come forth. And the more creative ideas, the, the more people that you have that are going to be able to help lead you in that direction. You're going to be able to do things to get to your desired goal of a class project or whatever. And I thought, you know, that's, that's it, it, it wasn't direct, but it's very direct in this application of what it means for your career development. The more people that you have on your team, the people who believe in you, the people who will talk about you in a favorable way, the people who will happily share with you, share about you to somebody else to help you get that J-O-B, the more people, the better chance you're going to have to succeed in getting there from here. It makes all the difference. The more people you're connected to, the more likely someone within that connectivity will be able to have and we'll be able to have that experience and know that you're experienced and be able to shed some light and help you out. So the goal of professional networking is to expand your reach through other people that you know who appreciate you, who respect you, who are willing to help you out. Think of your network of friends. Think of how that's developed from scratch. You've developed this network of friends, and, and what will they say about you? Uh, a friend of mine is a dean of students at Washington and Lee University, and I was asking him about this. He said it's about touch points. Touch points where we touch people's lives, and we have a chance to make a positive difference, a positive impression. And then he talked about the lasting impressions, the people that we remember, and unfortunately also the people we want to forget. So let me tap into your knowledge. Knowledge you might not even know that you have. I don't have an exclusive claim on wisdom as it relates to uh, being able to talk about personal relationship. You all develop them all the time. You all apply these same things that I've been talking about into your interpersonal relationships, kind of like the boyfriend-girlfriend thing we were talking about earlier. But you do it all the time. So what are some things that you need to do? If you are developing a network of people, of professional friends, that are going to be able to help your career develop, what are some of the things that you need to do? Any thoughts? Okay, you want to seize opportunities to expand your circles. Get as many circles as you can. The nature of networking is to have circles of influence, circles of friends that will be able, of people who will be able to get your back. You want to diversify your circles of relationship. If you're hanging out with all the same people, all right, that's good for that circle of friends, and that can be great for you, but it doesn't necessarily bring new opportunities. The more diverse your circle of friends are, the more diverse your circle of uh, of professional friends especially, the better off you're going to be in leading down that path. And you want to identify people who can be helpful to you. When I say, okay, can this person be helpful? Your professor is a great example of that. Think about that. Think about that relationship and how important that is. She knows the work that you do. She knows what you bring to the classroom and what your work ethic is like. 
And she's in a position to be able to say to somebody who calls her someday, hey, what do you know about Dave? Well, Dave's a great student, always was prepared. Okay, as opposed to, oh, well, eh, Dave was in my class. So be able to identify people who can be helpful to you. Make a strong first impression, just like that relationship with the boyfriend, girlfriend. Y if you have a chance to, to do some network networking at a business uh, networking opportunity, you want to be able to say, hi, how you doing? My name's Rod. Good to meet you. And your name is? I know that. Okay. So oh, hey, what do you do? Okay. And be able to have eye contact. You want to have eye contact? Just like you're trying to impress somebody for a day. You want to be able to have eye contact. I want to listen to what you're saying to me. I want to be able to be interested in what you're saying. I want to have good, good nonverbal communication. I want to make a positive first impression. Make it about her so that she'll remember me. That she'll have a better opportunity to say, I, I, that Rod, he was pretty impressive. I want to get to know him a little bit better. And the same is true of your business, re business relationships. If you're in a professional networking opportunity, make the eye contact. Be prepared to talk about yourself, but not much. What you want to do is you want to tease people more. You want to let, leave them with the desire to get to know you better, to learn more about you. Not to dominate the conversation, make it about them. But being able to be ready with the answer that says, oh, well, what are you interested in doing? What do you want to do? And be able to have a short, quick answer, an elevator speech. They'll say, here's what I'd like to do. And here's, you know, you know I think, I think my what I do in event development and things like that might be a good fit for you. I'd like to talk to you about that more sometime. Being able to leave them with a lasting impression that says, hey, yeah, I want to continue this conversation more. Just like you do with your friends. Just like you've done with your friends from, from, from the beginning. So that's some of the things that I think you should do. Repeat names also, so you'll remember names and follow up. That's part of the lasting impression. And when you ask for a time, hey, I want to follow up with you, I want to talk to you about this, do you have 15 minutes sometime? Being able to ask for a short period of time because it's not invasive, and then being able to keep to it. You've got to stick to it. Oh, I'm sorry, Con 15 minutes later, hey, thanks for the time. You know, I, I only asked for 15 minutes. You make it about them to say, oh, no, no, let's keep on talking. But that way you've made that powerful impression. You've demonstrated that you're genuine and authentic. You have to be authentic. Think about that in your, in your um, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. If you're not authentic, if you're not genuine, that becomes immediately noticeable and it's going to end to the death of the relationship. It's the same way in the business world. You've got to be authentic, you've got to be genuine, you've got to be trustworthy, and you've got to bring integrity to it. And be prepared to plant the seeds of the value that you can add to that person's organization. And when I'm talking about organizations, I'm talking about businesses that will hire you, but remember in today's climate, you're also talking about political campaigns, for instance, or nonprofit organizations. And leave people always wanting to know more. What else can I share? What else can I find out? What else do they want to learn about me that because they think that I'm actually interesting and might have a chance to be able to uh, bring something valuable to them? Social media is a great opportunity for networking, right? Especially for those of you who are introverted. If you're an introvert, it's a lot harder to be able to go up to somebody on a cold call to go to that networking opportunity. If you're an introvert, though, you can make a connection on social media. Uh, and it can be non-threatening and non-invasive for people. So social media is a great opportunity for networking, being able to make that initial contact with somebody. Hey, I heard about your company. I'd like to learn more about it. I think it, might, it coincides with some of the things that I'm interested in and some of the skills that I've been developing at the University of Charleston. But also you have to realize this about social media, and here's a good warning for all of you of all ages, and that includes me. What's out there on social media is out there for everybody to see. And that includes a prospective employer. I tell the story of a former basketball coach here at the University of Charleston who was recruiting a basketball player to her team. And then she saw a Facebook post about that player bragging about doing some shoplifting. Guess what? No more scholarship offer. No more offer. I don't want her. She happened to see it on Facebook. And it changed everything. That's a lesson for me, too. Because I'm in the public eye, and I have to realize that you never know who's watching. Every Sunday, whenever my pastor does a, um, a children's sermon at church, part of his prayer at the end of it is, Dear Lord, watch over these children. 
and the grown-ups that they are watching. And every single time I'm in a prayerful mood and he says that, I'm like, oh, that puts the pressure on. These kids are actually watching me. Re remember that. In this day and age where this is ubiquitous, everywhere, what you do in some place can come back and haunt you and cause negative consequences for you in a professional life. Because, all right, uh, if you, uh, I'll use this as an example, because some of you who are friends of mine know that I really don't like that. I don't like the N-word. I think it's offensive. I think it's just inappropriate under any circumstances. It should never be used by anybody. If I'm using that on social media, now, somebody who has that same attitude about the N-word and sees me using a derivative of it, what's their impression going to be? Is it going to be positive? Uh-uh. No. Same way, with, oh, let, let's use a different one that's not quite as offensive, but close. All right, I'm going to post a Confederate flag on my Facebook page. As an employer, I see that on a Facebook page. I, mean, I tell you what, that just gets a visceral reaction out of me because that flag is nothing but a symbol of hate. I don't want to get too political today. But, for, but that is a very strong position that I have. And if I'm in a position to hire you, and I see that you have the Confederate flag emblazoned on your Facebook page, I'm like, Ugh, I can't do that just can't do it. So remember, what you have out there is out there for anybody to see. And that has consequence. And I, that has consequence even for people of my age. But I would, I would hope that as you do that, as you wander into the morass of social media, that you recognize that somehow, some way, some of the things that you do today will have an impact on what you can do and what people will have the impression of you for tomorrow. So. BusinessKnowHow.com said effective business networking is the linking together of individuals who through trust and relationship building become walking, talking advertisements for one another. Keep in mind that networking is about being genuine and authentic, building trust and relationships and seeing how you can help others. Build that network. Just become friends with people who can help you. Legitimate, genuine friendships. Recognizing that who you, who you know matters and makes all the difference in opening doors for, for professional development. Can't stress that enough. You build your network, you develop those friendships, you increase the circles of influence that you have, and then that improves your opportunity in every example to figure out how to get to be from where you are right now. How do we get there from here? Use your available resources. Figure out what people can help you get there from here and use those people develop, create those connections, develop those relationships, and build a better professional future. Any questions? I've bored you all to death. Oh, if only you were here for Archie Challey, he'd be great. Any questions? Any thoughts? Now you know all about it, and you're going to go out there, and you're going to find new friends and build those relationships, right? Yeah. Because then you'll be able to say, oh, say, can you see? And in this case, it's Oh, say, can you see? <laughs> all right, thank you all for being here and for putting up with me.